State management is one of the most opinionated topics in Flutter community. There are many different packages for achieving this very important task and you might already be using one of them. But the question still remains, how do they actually work? Some might argue it doesn't matter as long as it works, but I disagree. Once upon a time, a wise old man told me, Stay a while and listen. Take the old man's advice and I'll show you how to build state management solution without using any third-party libraries. The point of this tutorial is to better understand capabilities of Dart and Flutter in order to elevate your skills and understanding of the packages you are taking for granted on everyday basis. You should never fear learning new things my friends, because fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate and we all know how that story ends. Before we get into the code, I'd like to discuss some basics. What is state management anyways and why do we need one? State management is basically a pattern or a template which allows you to have insight into state of different parts or components of your application. In Flutter we have a widget tree and those widgets need to somehow exchange data and have some awareness of what is going on in other widgets. Why? Well, because taking an action in one widget might depend on state of another widget which could be located anywhere in the widget tree. There are of course some built-in mechanisms for doing that kind of data exchange like value notifier, streams, inherited widget or just plain data passing through constructor. But the idea of state management is doing those things in organized, predictable and convenient way. If you're a beginner and just started learning Flutter, make sure you have a good understanding of stateful widget and its internal state management before using any third-party state management packages. You should also try to build a couple of apps using stateful widgets only. The more you work with stateful widgets, the more likely you understand the need for better solution and justification behind concepts like this. So what's wrong with stateful widget and default state management? Nothing really, except for two things. First, you are mixing logic with UI which is generally not a good idea and second, your state is still limited only to your widget. You still don't have a convenient way for accessing state of other widgets. By observing this issue, we can theorize existence of two types of state, local and global. Let's explain this in context of basic store app. Information about logged in user is required by multiple widgets. Whenever you check your card, account information or make purchase, user ID will be required to complete those operations. Since more widgets need that info, user becomes a global requirement. Meanwhile, some information like which items are in the cart is interesting only to cart widget, therefore making it a local state. Another step we need to take is decouple UI from business logic as much as possible. That can be achieved by extracting local state into separate class. It's also important to notice that local state will sometimes depend on changes in global state in order to update its own state. For example, when user changes, new cart items get loaded. Alright, that's enough of theory. Now let's take a look at what kind of tools we have on disposal to help us achieve aforementioned goals. I have previously mentioned value notifier, streams and inherited widget. These are all valid options which are also used under the hood by your favorite state management packages like provider and block. In this video, I've decided to go with value notifier. I feel like streams and inherited widget might need additional explaining and I want to keep things as simple as possible. The cool thing about value notifier is that it comes with value listenable builder widget which will rebuild UI when value changes. This allows us to bypass default stateful widget boilerplate and extract whole business logic outside widget in a separate class. Now that we have foundation of our state management solution, let's implement it in a real app. We are going to build a basic mobile store app and call it Rare Item Store. The goal of this app will obviously be selling very rare earthly and beyond earthly items. Besides our listings page, we'll also have login, cart and some basic information page about items we purchased. Now let's get to work and hope authorities don't notice our little black market. We'll start by creating store class which will be our basic state management unit. Store will keep generic state inside the value notifier declared as a private variable. Calling constructor will create new state with initial value we pass as an argument. Additionally, we'll declare getter to shorten syntax needed to get actual data from value notifier and setting state will be done through a function. Finally, we'll need a way to dispose value notifier. This will also dispose all listeners that might be subscribed to it. One thing we have to keep in mind is that private variables starting with underscore are actually visible outside class unless we declare whole file as library. 
This is default Dart behavior, which differs from other object-oriented languages you might get used to. Next, we'll create state class and call it user state. User state will hold values like which Firebase user is logged in, if login is in progress, and text of eventual error that might happen during the process. It's important to prevent any changes to state from outside by adding immutable attribute to our class. This will throw warning reminding us to declare all variables as final. The point of this state management solution is not to mutate original state, but to create new state through functions. This might sound familiar to you as it's used in Redux pattern. I'm taking the best of all worlds here and this concept has proven to work good. Unfortunately, there's no way to enforce immutability on basic types without wrapping them inside class. If more people will work on your project, you definitely want to define your base state class, make sure it has immutable attribute and then require it in your store class. Every state from now on should extend your base state, therefore making sure it's immutable. To keep things simple, I won't do that here, but I strongly suggest you do. I previously mentioned that our state will be immutable, so we need a function to help us copy state with individual parameter changes. I recommend you to install Dart Data Class Generator extension, which will save you a lot of time. Open up the context menu over class name and select Generate Copy With. Finally, we define factory constructor so we can easily get initial state. Now we can create user store, which is a concrete implementation of store class with user state type. Create a constructor and pass initial empty state to superclass. We're gonna be using Firestore for authentication, so we need to make a subscription. Keep track of subscription in private variable so we can cancel it on dispose. Whenever Firebase user changes, we are calling set state with new user as parameter. Finally, we need function which will sign in user with Firebase but also update state as the progress goes. First we set loading to true and clean error field. If everything goes right, we set logging to false or pass message in case of error. Similarly, we define signout function and getter for current user. I'll explain later why we need that one. Ok, now let's switch to login UI and plug that store in. For now we'll create user store as a field inside widget. Notice that we still need stateful widget because we have couple of text editing controllers that need to be disposed, which is unfortunate. There is a way to get rid of them completely by using Flutterhooks package, but we said no third party packages will be installed in this tutorial. I strongly recommend you to check out my other videos I made about Flutterhooks and get familiar with this very helpful and very underrated library. Plugging our state into value listenable builder will require reference to value notifier, so we need to add one more getter to our store class. Every time we push a new state, all widgets under this block will rebuild. If not already logging in, clicking on logging button will call sign in function with values from text fields and render message in case of error. Alright, so far so good, but there is one major mistake we did before that needs to get reviewed. We initialized user store as a field inside widget and that's bad. It's bad. Okay. Ideally we want to have a global instance of user state which is created once and can be accessed inside any widget. What I'm describing is basically some kind of dependency injection or a service locator. It might sound like complicated thing, but you'll be surprised how simple its implementation really is. Let's create new abstract class and call it service locator. We'll have two private static fields which are basically maps holding instances and constructor functions of objects we want to keep globally. Types of those objects will have to be registered first through a function. First argument is reference to function which will hold instructions how to create object of that class and second parameter is optional flag telling us if we want to create object instantly or per demand. Both maps will contain class name as keys, while first one will keep instances and other functions with directions how to create those instances. Secondly, we'll define get function which will try to retrieve instance of class we specified. If instance exists, return it, if doesn't, call constructor function and store its result as instance. Optionally, we can add reset which will recreate object and call some function on object before destroying it. Here is an example how it can be used to call dispose on store. And lastly, we can unregister some type if needed with unregister function. The best place to register your dependencies would be in the main file, since we'll need some of those instances as soon as the app starts. By the way, this service locator was inspired by Gedit package. In real life, I'd use Gedit instead of implementing everything myself, but as I said before, for academic purposes, we'll do everything just by using Dart and Flutter. 
Now we can go back to login widget and replace hard-coded user store with service locator. Next we have to model basic item we're gonna be selling. It will contain fields like name, price and other properties that come with it. Count will be the number of available items in the warehouse. This time we'll generate whole data class because we need from map and to map functions in order to serialize and deserialize objects from Firestore. Next model we're gonna create is cart item, which will be a wrapper for shopping item with additional quantity property. This will indicate how many instances of this item we added to cart. Lastly, we're gonna create user settings model, which will hold user ID, items we put in our cart, and list of items we already purchased. Now that we have all ingredients ready, user settings state can be modeled. What it basically contains is just user settings and loading flag, which will be used to show and hide progress indicator. Finally, we get to create user settings store. It's all business as usual, except this time our state will depend on user state. In case user changes, new user settings must be loaded. We can get user store with service locator and subscribe to changes, but first we have to add those functionalities in service locator class. Add listener function will register callback with value notifier and call it when state changes. Unfortunately, value notifier doesn't return any parameters when state changes, so we have to add it manually as new value and previous value. To store old value, we'll create private variable. Every time state changes, old value will be stored. This can also come handy if you want to add revert functionality in future. Finally, we'll add remove listener function in case we need to cancel subscription early. Now we can subscribe to user store in constructor of user settings store. Subscriber always takes responsibility of unsubscribing so we'll keep reference in our private variable. We'll listen to changes inside on user state changed function and fetch new settings from Firestore. Notice that by having old and new value we can check if there is a change in field of our interest. Remember that state is immutable and in order to change one field we have to create new object which would invoke callback on listener. This way we have option to filter or select value we are interested into instead of reacting to every change in state. Lastly we'll override this post method and make sure we also remove the listener. Finally we get back to main file and register user settings store. Next important thing we have to do is get actual items and list them on the screen. We'll create item state which will hold list of items and loading indicator. Item store will contain function for getting items from Firestore and function to update quantity when user makes purchase. Notice that we use copy with function to push new state and update only fields that changed. We'll register item store in main, but this time we can set lazy to true. Item store will be needed once we enter item listings page and not before, therefore it can be lazy loaded on demand. Similarly, we'll create cart store which will hold items that are in the cart. This time no extra state class will be created since we can keep cart items in a list. Cart store will listen to user setting state and just pass cart items into its own state when user changes. List.from constructor will create copy of that list. When adding items to cart, we'll update quantity by calling function in item store and set new state which is a copy of previous state plus new item. Similarly, we'll have function to remove and check out items. At the end, getter will be added to calculate total price of all items in the cart. Cart store can also be registered as lazy dependency in main function. One thing we forgot to do before is check if user is logged in and have redirect depending on that outcome. We can get user store in app widget and check current user field. If user is not already logged in, it will be redirected to login page. Finally, we can wire all those stores we created in listing page by using value listenable builder. We do the same in the cart page by listening to cart store and reacting to changes. You can access complete code from the link in the description below. Now let's run the app and purchase some items. You can follow debug messages to get the idea of what is created and in which order. It helps you understand if everything is working as expected. Thank you for watching and see ya in the next one.